Hey guys, this is Dr. Isrep with Integrative Kidney Solutions and today I'm going to be talking to you about hyponatremia. Many of you has asked us to talk about this topic, so this is mainly for the primary care physician and the hospitalist, so let's do this. So we know that hyponatremia is defined as a sodium level of less than 135 and um, I want you to remember one thing to begin with is that hyponatremia is actually a disorder of water metabolism, water metabolism, not sodium uh, per se. So uh, we all know symptoms of hyponatremia can be can vary from uh, really no symptoms at all to just headache, lethargy, dizziness, confusion, and uh, psychosis, and even coma. Um, so true hyponatremia really occurs when uh, the serum osmolality is decreased. So um, usually it happens when uh, the, the body is unable to excrete free water by the kidney. So uh, that happens despite continued water intake. And uh, it again, not specifically related to excessive uh, or, or decreased amount of sodium uh, concentration uh, or, or sodium, total sodium in the body. So uh, when you think about hyponatremia or hypernatremia, you don't want to think about just the um, sodium um, per se, you want to think about water also. Now, uh, the kidney's ability to um, excrete water uh, is dependent on two major things. And I want you to uh, remember this uh, thing here. Uh, one of them is the antidiuretic hormone or um, uh, uh, vasopressin. And this is uh, really excreted by the pituitary gland. Uh, based on osmolality and uh, volume, status of the body. The other um, thing that the kidney's ability uh, to excrete water is dependent on the concentration of solute in the medulla. Now, let's pause here a little bit to talk about uh, this graph here. And this graph, you see that uh, on the uh, x-axis, the uh, serum osmolality, while on the uh, y-axis you see serum um, ADH level and on the uh, right side we see the um, urinary osmolality um, in uh, on the other y-axis. So um, I want to point out here to the level when, when the serum osmolality dropped to uh, less than 280 the um, total the, the excretion of ADH or ADH level in the um, serum becomes undetectable. So when we have low serum osmolality, we should not have uh, any circulating ADH. And that reflects on making the urine osmolality uh, very low. So if at any time in the face of hyponatremia, uh, and, and, and let's say 280, sodium osmolality of 280, kind of equal, equal to a sodium level of about 128. So if you see low sodium and the urine osmolality anywhere higher than 100, my, 100 uh, milliosmol per liter, you really uh, think that there is circulating ADH that uh, is appropriate or inappropriate, uh, but it's there. So it's not normal to have uh, even slightly higher urine osmolality in the face of hyponatremia, urine osmolality in the face of hyponatremia. And, uh, and many get confused because uh, oftentimes the lab record um, a urine osmolality that is normal, but in fact it's inappropriate for the level of serum, sodium and serum osmolality. Uh, the other thing that you know, we, we mentioned here is the uh, solute in the, um, 
the, the level of solute in the medulla. Uh, one, of, one of the things that I want to point out to you is that it, the, most of the nephron is situated in the uh, cortex, but there, in, in the medulla we have the uh, descending and ascending loop of Henle and the collecting duct where we absorb most of the water. And the medulla and the interstitium, the interstitial um, uh, tissue in, in the medulla is salty because of the absorption of all the solute and urea. So uh, remember that medulla is salty and that helps us absorb all the water. So if someone is not eating enough solute, like protein that produce urea and salt, they will not be able to reabsorb the water and their water handling becomes very, very um, uh, diminished. So uh, these are two things that are very important for you to remember when you think about um, hyponatremia and, and evaluation and management of the patients. Now, let's uh, continue talking uh, here about uh, what causes um, hyponatremia. And when you evaluate a patient with hyponatremia, you really need to look at three things. First of all, you need to uh, evaluate, examine the volume status, and, and urine sodium can help you with that in addition to your physical examination. Second, you need to look at the urine osmolality. And third, you want to look on how quickly serum uh, sodium dropped. So uh, there are two ways, there, there are three different uh, uh, syndromes of, uh, I would say, uh, of hyponatremia. One of them is uh, you have a patient who has uh, contracted volume or volume depleted. In these scenarios, you see that the urine osmolality will be less than 20 milliosmol uh, per uh, liter, and the uh, uh, the urine uh, I'm sorry, the urine sodium will be less than 20 uh, millimol per liter, and the urine uh, osmolality will be super high, more than 500. Uh, in other scenario, you will have someone with normal volume uh, or euvolemia they have a urine sodium usually of more than 40 ml, uh, millimol per liter uh, and a urine osmolality of more than 100. Uh, the, you think here, uh, think about hypothyroidism, think about adrenal insufficiency and SIADH. And then the third syndrome is where you have someone who has expanded volume or hypovolemia or volume overload. These patients usually have uh, decreased effective circulating volume in situations such as uh, CHF, liver cirrhosis, and nephrotic syndrome. Uh, usually these patients have a urine sodium less than 20 millimol per liter or urine, uh, any urine osmolality of more than 100. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about psychogenic polydipsia, not particularly fit into those syndromes. Usually these patients uh, have low serum osmolality and low urine osmolality. Um, SIADH is um, often referred to in every uh, situation when someone has hyponatremia, but it's IDH is actually a diagnosis of exclusion. You have to rule out uh, hypothyroidism, so you want to make sure that the patient has normal TSH. You want to make sure they have normal cortisol stimulation test, no kidney failure, they have normal uh, uh, volume status, and they're not taking any thiazide diuretics. <clears throat> and there are multiple causes of SIDH. I'm not going to go through them right now. Uh, enough to say that there are uh, pulmonary causes, neurological causes, and other causes. There are multiple medications that can cause SIDH. Some of them stimulate ADH uh, release, such as uh, carbamazepine, tegretol, SSRIs, clofibrate, and uh, also opioid, uh, for example. There are medications that also decrease um, or increase the effect of ADH on the kidneys, and these include NSAIDs, cyclosporin, for example. There are drugs also we do not know how they act and how they cause uh, SIDH, such as haloperidol, amitriptyline, and ecstasy, which is not particularly a drug, it's a drug of abuse. Um, now, 
Let's talk about managing hyponatremia. Well, first, we need to know what type of it we're dealing with, what is the cause uh, of hyponatremia, as we mentioned earlier, and how quickly it developed. So we're talking about either we acute or chronic. Uh, so we rule out, uh, so when, when we uh, talk about correcting hyponatremia, there are rules of how we correct it. First, we want to make sure that uh, serum sodium is corrected at a rate of uh, 0.5 to 1 milli equivalent per liter per hour, a maximum of 6 to 8 hours per 24 hours. And the rate should be slower if you have a chronic hyponatremia or if we don't know how long the uh, hyponatremia has been. If uh, severe symptoms are there, use 3% saline at a rate of 100 cc per hour for 3 hours. Uh, and you want to make sure you, you check the serum uh, sodium often, preferably uh, every 3 to 4 hours. If you use um, normal saline, usually uh, serum sodium uh, increases by 1 milli equivalent per liter for every liter of normal saline. If you're using normal saline and that does not happen, then you probably have the wrong diagnosis or the patient is not hypo volemic. So in cases where you have mild hyponatremia where the sodium is, less, uh, is more than 125, uh, let's say we have a contracted ECF or, um, or someone who is hypovolemic, you treat those with normal saline. If they have normal ECF um, uh, and we, uh, we figured out what the cause, uh, whether it's medications or, or others, you restrict free water to less than uh, uh, 1200 cc per day and consider uh, using demiclocycline 600 milligram per day for resistant cases. In expanded um, volume status, you, you can use salt and water restrictions and loop diuretics. In uh, severe hyponatremia uh, with symptoms, uh, if the, 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 the syndrome developed uh, acutely and you know that for sure, you want to start with emergency correction with 3% and target 1 milli equivalent per liter hourly until sodium level is more than 125. In chronic situation where you have no, uh, uh, or, or you don't know how long uh, the sodium has been low, use normal saline or 3% um, uh, at the rate of 1 mil equivalent per liter hourly until symptoms resolve, then decrease the, uh, the rate uh, to 0 0.5 mil equivalent per liter per uh, hourly. Um, in severe uh, hyponatremia that is not symptomatic, Assess the volume status as you did in mild hyponatremia and correct sodium at a rate of 0 0.5 mL equivalent per liter hourly. For more information, follow us on www.nkidney.com. You can also find us on Instagram at uh, Integrative Kidney. We're also here on YouTube at Integrative Kidney Solutions. We are on Facebook and Twitter. If you like this video, please uh, put a comment below. Press the like button. Feel free to ask us any questions. We'd love to hear back from you.